Okay. Um. Wow. Immaculate was directed by Michael Mohan and written a very long time ago by Andrew Lobel. I believe I got his name right. And it stars Sidney Sweeney in the lead role. And it tells the story of Cecilia, a woman who in summary kind of turns her life around a little bit or at least believes she is turning her life around by joining a, uh, a nun. Play You're going to have to forgive me for my lack of knowledge on... Um, Catholicism. Essentially, she joins this convent and she becomes a nun and she is a very devout woman and because of that, it blinds her to a lot of fucked up shit that's happening behind closed doors at this convent and I think that that is all I'm gonna say in regards to a synopsis of this film. Now let's talk about Sydney Sweeney for a second because I have some thoughts. In Euphoria, I think she is one of the best parts of Euphoria and I've never talked about Euphoria at length on this channel before but surprise, surprise, I love Euphoria. Are you really surprised that I, Xavier Reichbaum, like Euphoria? Come on. But unfortunately, I feel like Sydney Sweeney's perception in the media is sort of solely pinned to Cassie, the, the character she played in Euphoria, and the way Cassie was depicted as a character, and the way Sydney Sweeney, certain things that she did to play the character, and some of the ways that Sam Levinson depicted her character. I don't want to get into all of that. It's very... I don't know, it just seems like very hot button territory and I don't really like to, to, to delve too deep into that stuff on my channel. But I really think that that is to the detriment of everybody with that viewpoint because hear me when I say this, I think Sydney Sweeney is one of the greatest people we have working in Hollywood today. And that's not me saying that she's one of the greatest actresses of all time, although like regardless what you think of who she is perceived as as a person or even what you think of Euphoria as a show. I don't, can you really deny that Sydney Sweeney is an insanely talented actress? I don't think any of us can really deny that. Like, sure, maybe her character in Euphoria didn't work for you. Maybe Euphoria as a whole just doesn't work for you. But don't, don't throw the shade on Sydney Sweeney. I think she is an incredibly talented actress. And also, recently, I've been watching a lot of lengthy interviews with her in much within the lead up to this film that we're talking about in this video, Immaculate, and I've come to just really respect her as an artist. I mean, she's really passionate about it. She's interested in writing, directing, she has a producer credit on this movie. She actually auditioned for this movie like years ago when she was much younger, I think back when it was initially written, and she didn't get the part and it was sort of scrapped a little bit like the movie never happened, but apparently it just stayed in her head for years and years and years, and now all these years later, she finally finally was able to secure funding to get it made. And I think that says a lot about an actor. You know, no shade to actors who are just okay taking a role in something and doing their job and getting their paycheck because they love to act and it's what they love to do. I'm sort of a jack of all trades when it comes to artistic expression. I kind of do it all, which also means that I understand what it's like to be an actor and like, I, I, I understand that perspective is what I'm saying. But Sydney Sweeney was campaigning for this movie and really pulling for it for a very long time and so I imagine it was very fulfilling for her to finally get it off the ground and that just elevates my respect for artists through the roof. Also, this is actually her second actor-director collaboration with Michael Mohan, and they their last film that they made was The Voyeurs, I believe it was called. No idea what that is. I don't even know the genre. I've never seen any posters, don't even know the logline or synopsis or anything at all. Maybe I should watch it after seeing this because they work very well together as an actor-director duo. A lot of that was also boosting my expectations for this movie, and also, I just love it when a new horror movie comes out that people are actually saying is good. I am a massive horror fan and I am a fierce, and I mean fierce, defender of the horror genre. I personally think that the horror genre has some of the best filmmaking in all categories. You can list them all off. I think the horror genre has some of the best filmmaking, whatever aspect of filmmaking it may be, in the history of cinema, and I don't think it gets enough credit for that as a genre. But I cannot ignore that there are a shit ton of horror movies out there, many times very successful ones, unfortunately, that are just terrible and has given horror in the eyes of the mainstream this sort of stamp of schlockiness and just very trashy, 
not good filmmaking. <laughs> so whenever a new horror film comes out that it seems like critics and audiences for the most part are saying is actually good and different from all of those other films that I was just describing, that gets me really excited. But I would be lying if I said that the thing that didn't get me the most excited about this movie, and I'm sorry if this offends anybody, but it's the way Christians reacted to it, and Catholic- just hyper-religious people in general. Full disclosure, I am not religious at all. I was raised religious, particularly through my high school years. There were, you know, I, I don't want to get into all that, That that's a whole other video. Me personally, I'm not religious. I don't necessarily believe in a higher power. I guess I would identify as agnostic if I had to slap a label on it. So do bear that in mind when I say that seeing how many hyper-religious people were getting so offended by this movie, it, you know, there's that sort of, um, problematic side of me that got very excited by that. I'm sorry. Catholicism has certainly been the biggest target, we'll say, when it comes to horror films about religion. Catholicism has certainly gotten the worst end of the stick in that regard. But check your stance on all of that at the door when you're going into this movie, because I was very, very pleasantly surprised to see that even as good as I heard people were saying it was, you know, like people were saying that about several other movies, several other horror movies that I saw that I got excited for, and I went in and I was like, yeah, I mean, you know, like, like, I understand to mainstream audiences who haven't seen, like, certain other horror films, those films probably seem better than a lot of the trashy horror films that unfortunately are very popular. But just me as somebody who's, like, really has delved into, like, the darkest depths of the horror genre, sometimes I can be let down. But with this, I wasn't. I was very pleasantly surprised that this film turned out to be a very slow, in a good way, a very slow, building, very tense, psychological thriller, horror, in a way, that is more focused on just that eerie atmosphere and that sort of macabre, gothic type of horror that we just don't get anymore. And that slow burn approach to this story works very well with the film's runtime, which is barely an hour and a half. It's like an hour and 28 minutes or something. As you guys know, I always start off with the negatives because I prefer to end on the positives when it comes to film and filmmaking. So let's get into my negatives with this one. And my first one I will say is the first act of this film. It's a little frustrating because we're gonna get into what I thought of the ending. Mild spoilers here, I kinda fucking loved it. And in retrospect, maybe on a rewatch, because I know what's coming, I might enjoy the first act of this movie a bit more. And I don't want to say it's bad. I I'm not going to say that it's bad. In fact, even the first act of this movie, as cliche and stereotypical as it is, is still better than a lot of the shit that Blumhouse has been putting out. What saves the third act for me is the brilliant cinematography, camera work, production design, the music. I mean, on a technical level, I have very, very little flaws with this movie. My big biggest flaw with that first act, unfortunately, is how cliche it is. There are a bunch of false jump scares. Some jump scares that maybe some people might argue aren't necessarily false jump scares, but I believe the thing that should be initiating the jump scare should be something that is actually a threat or is something that is hinting at an impending threat. And that should have a logical payoff later in the film. There's one jump scare I'm thinking of right now with a bird in the movie that if we're talking about tropes in Catholic horror films, definitely like like fits the tropes. And like I, I understand just based on the context of other Catholic horror movies and some um, mythology within Catholicism, like why that might be happening, but it just kind of happens and it's there just wasn't really a payoff to it it just sort of happened to happen and it was just like okay I, I mean I guess you know if you've seen a, a billion Catholic horror movies that might make sense to you but even within like the world of this film and even with that knowledge it, it just felt a little out of place to me but that's definitely nitpicky and as I said there are a bunch of other false jump scares within the first act of this movie where I was just kind of like come on this movie's above this. For the most part, this script and the talent involved within this production in general, you guys are above this. Come on. As somebody who has written a lot of horror, though, I will say that it is very tempting to sort of give in to those tropes because as valid as they are to criticize, there is a side of it that is kind of fun where, like, when you're actually creating a horror product, there's a fun side to it and you, and you just kind of want to lean into it. There, there's this 
like pulling temptation to just like have those false jump scares in there just to keep the audience on their toes. That being said, it did bog down the first act of this movie a lot for me. However, I will say the second and third acts of this movie Definitely some of the better horror that I've seen in a long time. And there is absolutely a midpoint event that operates effectively as a big shift for the rest of the film, and I loved it. It kind of was hinted at in the trailer, but like, just from what I saw in the trailer, I didn't know like, when it was going to happen, who was going to be involved necessarily, and so when it happened, I actually was surprised by it. And honestly, from that point on, I don't really have many issues with this movie aside from one and that is there's a sort of reveal towards the third act of the film that kind of it, it's not the concept of the reveal itself that bugs me I actually really love that the movie had the balls to go there but it has to do with one character who's involved with it and it just it, it sort of feel like the movie deviated from this very like slow eerie atmospheric like building tension horror film into a more borderline campy route just just with this one actor's performance it was just giving like really hardcore anime villain vibes and i wasn't i i don't really mean that in the best way as a lover of anime as a massive anime fan myself i do not mean that in the best way but thankfully everything else in the movie was done so well virtually everything else in the movie aside from those few criticisms with the first act that i listed that it didn't ruin the movie for me and honestly in the moment it, it does make for some of the more tense, pulse-pounding sequence, sequences in the film. There, there's this very long sequence where Sidney Sweeney is hiding from somebody in this sort of maze-like area. That's all I'll say. And it went on for a long time, and I was, you know, worried, like, this is kind of going on a while. I feel like it's going to lose steam, but it, it never did. They, they have very clever ways in which they play around with the lighting in the scene to really build that tension. And what I will say is the movie kind of makes up for all the false jump scares in the first act with how it treats things like that in the second act, where it's constantly directed in a way to get you to be like, okay, yeah, there's about to be a jump scare. Here it comes, three, two, one, and then it doesn't happen. And then the scene ends and there wasn't a jump scare. It just leaves you with this eerie, cold feeling. I love horror filmmaking like that. People like Ari Aster excel at that and apparently Michael Mohan as well. Now let's talk about that reveal for a second because this is the thing that that hyper-religious crowd that I was talking about was getting like super offended by. And you know what? I'm going to say understandably so. It's easy for me as an agnostic person who has various gripes with my religious upbringing to sit here and just sort of laugh at those people, but I also have to see the nuance in the situation. I'm somebody who preaches about nuance all the fucking time. I might as well be self-aware and hold myself accountable and just like see the nuance in this situation too. I'm sure if I had devoted my life to a faith and I was very devout in a faith it like in the faith that this film is portraying sure yeah th like if i truly believed in everything that i was being taught uh, yeah i un i understand why it might offend some people but i also need those people to understand that i'm not coming at it from that perspective and so really i found that it just really contributed to the super dark macabre sort of turn that this movie takes at that midpoint which i talked about and i won't lie it made me super uncomfortable it grossed me out it was absolutely abhorrent but that's what i want out of a horror film like this out of a fictional horror film in a slew of horror films that have had plots similar to this i actually found it very refreshing to have a film that didn't feel safe in that way like it went there and various artists worked very very hard to get this film off the ground and to get it made and so i just love that i love that the movie had the guts to go there as i've already said and as i also already said it it contributed to the more macabre side of the movie i feel like i've used that word a lot but i also don't use it enough in general when it comes to my videos and talking about horror films i really do have a soft spot for macabre gothic horror shit like edgar Allan poe is probably the most cliched pick uh, the Fall of the House of Usher is one of my favorite stories of all time. The Telltale Heart, I love that shit. It's creepy, it's eerie, it's disturbing, it's slow building tension. Love it. And so for those reasons, the third act's reveal in this movie did
did work for me and honestly I didn't see the the twist itself if you want to call it a twist I didn't see that coming as much as I love the ending and, and it's this very long unbroken shot where Sydney Sweeney is really bringing it in this role I feel like I haven't talked about her much in this video so let, let's do that now actually before I hit home my point on the ending because I kind of want to end on that Sydney Sweeney is absolutely astounding in this movie dare I say that she's very very good very good no she really did kind of blow me away in this movie and I love that she has started to sort of expand out of this euphoria zeitgeist that she's been in for the longest time I like that she's taking roles where she gets to play different characters like in anyone but you she's playing a grown ass woman who has her own skeletons in the closet and shit like that and then in this movie i don't think i really need to explain why this character is insanely different from cassie and honestly as much as i love sydney sweeney part of me was kind of worried for that because i saw the trailer and it was just like i don't know she she just doesn't seem to fit into this world in this environment and then I watch the movie and it kind of plays into that for a lot of that first act that I talked about and I think that that's kind of the point and obviously yes yeah, Sydney Sweeney auditioned for this many years ago and she was campaigning for this movie and obviously she is more than likely the reason that she got the lead role in this movie because it meant so much to her but I, I don't know like I, I think it speaks to the really good director actor relationship between her and Michael Mohan because Michael Mohan was very clearly I guess taking advantage of the fact that a lot of people were going to be thinking that going into this movie that Sidney Sweeney wasn't going to fit into this aesthetic and at a certain point in the film it really started to work for me I believed her performance I believed her character I it truly felt like she was living in the role so props to her for that I think she's incredible in this movie now let's talk about that ending and sort of transitioning still talking about Sydney Sweeney's performance yes the ending of the film everybody's talked about it it's been on some of the promotional promotional artwork as well that shot of Sydney Sweeney's face not gonna talk about what she's looking at why she's covered in blood what exactly is happening but damn that that was some shit <laughs> i know you guys are tired about me talking about sydney sweeney's performance but and i'm sure you're tired of hearing everybody talk about this scene in particular but i, I don't want to stop talking about it it's really good when something is good let's celebrate it let's not stop talking about it because it'll show hollywood that a lot of us want more shit like that things that feel very raw and in the moment and not in a manipulative way like a lot of other things do and as much as i love euphoria how certain scenes in euphoria also kind of come across it's really impressive from a filmmaking standpoint and sydney sweeney as i said she really really brings it in that scene i'll shut up about her now it's a great ending and honestly i feel like it's the thing that offended yes i'm gonna talk about this again i'm sorry i feel like it's the thing that offended the hyper religious crowd that was hating on this movie the most i think it offended them way more than the actual reveal honestly the whole third act of this movie is problematic for them i would assume and as i said understandably so but i gotta be honest as much as i loved the ending i really loved as i said that the movie went there i i'm all about artists taking risks and not being afraid to explore certain subjects and themes and physical events but i was honestly expecting it to be a lot worse than it was like from a pure like controversial standpoint just purely based on all the outrage i was hearing about it like when it happened i i, I even will go as far to say like this seems like something that a hyper religious crowd would actually like kind of love <laughs> and just disclaimer if you are a catholic person watching this video or you're part of another faith and this movie kind of offended you in that way i apologize i i know that that probably sounds a little like weird to you it's hard to fully flesh out that point without spoiling the movie so i'm not gonna spoil the movie but like I'm gonna try. <laughs> the thing that Sydney Sweeney does at the, the, Cecilia is her character's name, the thing that Cecilia does at the end of this movie, I, <laughs> this is so hard. <laughs> Cecilia does something at the end of this movie. It involves her doing some, it, it involves her performing an act upon another thing that is present within the film people who have seen the movie just think of the nature of the thing that she was doing this to and think about like what the movie was implying was going on there 
do, do you kind of understand why I don't really understand why, like, super religious people didn't, like, kind of a appreciate that ending? Like, I feel like it's something that, like, actual religious people in real life might do if they were in that situation. All I'm saying is, the ending really, really worked for me, and it is one of those endings, I will admit, that will make or break the film for you, and if it if it breaks the film for you, that's totally, to totally okay. I've already talked at length about how I, I do understand why for some people it might be a bit of an issue. But for me, just from my perspective, I found it to be so suitable for a horror film, and specifically the kind of horror film that this is. So yeah, guys, most of the rumors are true. Immaculate is a damn good horror movie in a sea of not-so-good horror movies. I'm looking at you, Imaginary. Oh yeah, and Night Swim. Uh, not saying that Night Swim is a good horror movie, I'm saying, like, Night Swim is in there with Imaginary Among the Sea of just, like, really shitty horror movies, all produced by Blumhouse. Which, by the way, I wrote, shot, and edited a whole video on Night Swim, and it was actually on my channel for a few days, and then I decided to take it down, because while I'm okay with negatively criticizing movies, that video just felt kind of mean. I had just finished watching the movie, and I was just, like, so angry and I was like I could really make a good video about this because I'm like I'm so angry and I can bring that screen presence and but at the end of the day I I'm a filmmaker I'm a writer I'm a director I'm an actor I'm really trying to do it all and while I did not like Night Swim Night Swim is not a good movie let me make that very clear I'm not defending that film by any means but in regards to how I prefer to go about negative criticism that's not it that's just not it, so I took that video down. <laughs> anyway guys, I really do think you should check out Immaculate as soon as you get the chance. It's available on home video now, but be prepared, because another thing I didn't talk about, the movie's actually surprisingly violent. There's definitely some wince-inducing moments. If you have a thing with tongues, fingernails, and female audiences in particular, certain things that happen in this movie that are probably gonna get to you. <laughs> I mean, they got, they, they got to me as a non-female person they, they they got to me so I, I think that says a lot <laughs> but overall i think that this is a really good horror film i think it's definitely a step in the right direction for modern horror filmmaking and it sort of kind of also works as a revitalization of the religious horror subgenre because let's be honest that subgenre is filled with a lot of shit the good ones we have are good. The Exorcism of Emily Rose, for example, or the Conjuring movies, honestly, all three Conjuring movies. I actually quite enjoy the Conjuring films for the most part, though I do think Immaculate is a step above them. But yeah, those are basically my thoughts on Immaculate. I'm so glad I finally got to watch it, and more than anything, I'm just glad that it met my expectations and surpassed them in a few ways. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. Be sure to let me know what you thought of Immaculate down below, or what is your favorite religious-based horror film. I'd be very curious to hear some of your picks. If you would like to follow my personal and creative endeavors outside of just the YouTube channel, you can follow me on Instagram at the Xavier Reichbaum. Or if you would like to follow my production company, Headspace Productions, I also have an official account for that company on Instagram, which is simply at Headspace Productions. I also have a podcast called the Headspace Podcast. I recently released episode seven of that podcast. Yes, it's somewhat newer, but I'm really, really enjoying it. And the feedback that I have gotten on it has been really good. I recently released episode 7 of that podcast in which I discussed Alien, the classic sci-fi horror film, so if you're interested, go check it out. It's available on all major podcast streaming platforms, most namely Apple Music and Spotify. Once again, thank you guys so much as always for watching. I will see you in the next video, and until then, keep writing, keep shooting, and keep editing.